Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Broken Roads with me, Bragaton. Let's head back to Sean and let him know what's going on. That's right, three rhymes in a row. But what did he have to say? He looks up to you. He said they would have gone north. Doesn't make sense to me, but it's the only lead we have. He rubs the back of his neck. Look, I've got to stay here. Clean up the farm, check on Dad. You go on ahead. Did you find anything else? Nothing worth following up on. They know how to cover their tracks. No surprise. Oh, I might get lucky though. Are you sure you won't come with me? Like I said, I'm needed here. He stares at the bodies on the ground. Considering. I'll get the sheet back. Don't worry. Good. He looks you in the eye. I trust you. Bring him home. I right, head out. I'll be careful out there. Won't you back in one piece too? Two dusty figures stand in the distance having a heated conversation. You can't hear everything they're saying, but the name older side comes up repeatedly. You're able to get quite close before they notice you. As you approach the sheep, however, they suddenly fall silent. Wasn't expecting voice acting. Hey you. The woman glowers at you, sunshap cheeks red and angry. Just stay back, alright? Relax. I'm not here to hurt you. She snorts. Pretty ballsy to think you could. Now just hold on a tick. A wiry man inserts himself between the two of you. Despite appearances to the contrary, my partner and I can be reasonable. Let's hear each other out. He gives the woman a cautioning glance. Who are you? I'm Norman. This is Sue. She scowls at him. Musterers from Alderside. Are these your sheep? They are now. What she means to say is we found them wandering loose and added them to our flock. So yeah, ours now. Raiders attacked Taylor's farm this morning, made off with most of their sheep. They went after Brookton too. His face pales. They hit Otterside a few days ago. Never dreamed they'd try their luck with the Taylors. He turns to Sue. This is bad. She rolls her eyes. No crap. So you're on your way back to Otterside? We were. He speaks carefully, like someone afraid of spooking a wild horse. We're just letting the sheep have a little rest. Some of them have come a long way. And I look at the sheep. She looks at Norman, who nods imperceptibly. Alright. Ducks her thumbs into her pants pockets, but no funny business. Examine their ears for markings. There are quite a few different earmarks, all from communities in the area. You spot Otterside, Pingelli, and of course Taylor's Farm. A third from each place, 30 sheep in total. Probably the stragglers, left behind to starve. Well, she's clearly impatient to leave. Now some of these sheep have Taylor's Farm brands on them. Crap. He grabs his jaw, then looks at his partner. He groans. Sue, you said he checked him. Don't tell me you knew. Of course I bloody did. Her eyes glitter with dark hatred. She turns her gaze from you to him. Brookton's our ally, but so what? We don't get these sheep back to Alderside. You can kiss little Cammy's sweet round tummy goodbye, Norm. No more food for tiny bellies. Is that what you want? Sue, he groans again. This isn't who we are. No. Her reply is cruel and honest. It's who we need to be. I'm not sure which one. It's 
So we split them 50-50. We still have sheep from a third place. Was it Pingeli? And they might show up later. Oh, these are someone else's sheep. You're stealing them. If the roles were reversed, you'd want them back too, wouldn't you? Oh really? She lets out a mocking laugh. Well, the roles are reversed, mate. Now Sue, I... She cuts him off. No. I think it's time for us to go. She looks you up and down. We're all done trying to appeal to my better nature, that is. Now you take half, and I take half. Brookton has a few more mouths to feed than Alderside. At least no one will starve. He doesn't break eye contact with you to speak. Gather half those buggers, Norm. Time to head home. She waits until he's out of earshot with his sheep. Don't screw this up for us, Brookton. Both came out of this better than we went in. Got a lot of hungry people back in Alderside. She walks away. Left you all the Taylor's farm sheep and some from Pingeli. Now all that remains is to drive them home. Travel to Taylor's farm. I'm not a farmer, but I feel like herding 15 sheep is a pretty big feat for one person to do. When you arrive back at the farm, an austere man in a bright blue coat is talking to Sean and John. He looks up as you approach. He tries to hide it, but his eyes widen just a little as he sees the flock following in your wake. How many did you say got rustled, Sean? He looks over the sheep, noting condition and quantity with the merchant's quick appraisal. Your new farmhand's a keeper, that's her bloody sure. I told you, his tone is triumphant. What happened out there? It didn't seem worth fighting to get more than our fair share. Ah yes, he nods wisely. Let's not take more than our fair share of sheep from poachers. That would be absurd. Who said anything about poachers? These were people from Alderside. He closes his eyes briefly. Didn't feel like sharing that piece of information up front, did you? You didn't let me finish talking. Fair enough. <laughs> At least you got a bit of backbone to you. He barks out a laugh. Had a bit of an echo when he said fair enough. Also, more voice acting. Well, you brought some of our sheep home, which is more than I'd hoped for when you set out. He doesn't look at Mick. Dad and I'll go to Otterside in the morning, smooth over any ruffled feathers. It'd have been worse. From the look on Sean's face, this is high praise indeed. We're done blowing smoke up each other's asses. I've got business to attend to. With a jaunty salute, he heads off towards Brookton, whistling. Sean and John look at each other, nod at you, then go their separate ways. I guess we go talk to Mick now? There is no inclination in the conversation that we should have done that. He gives you a nod, then winces. Hello again. I wish I could have brought back more sheep. Yeah, he scratches his cheek. Well, I reckon me and Sean will head out to Aldersdale tomorrow and see what can be done. He hesitates. I'm sure we'll hear the story again in the morning, with more opinions. Otterside will get to have their say. But as far as me and Sean are concerned, you did right by us. He nods, as if to himself. He smiles. Anyway, go get a drink, if you're keen. We can wrap things up around here. I hope you're not disappointed with how things turned out. Mate, he shakes his head. All of that you've been through today, you're worried how I feel. Alright, uh, anything else I can help out with for today? He shakes his head and smiles. Nothing except getting a good rest, ready for tomorrow. Bye bye. It's been a mongrel of a day. Hey, a black sheep. 
Well, let's go chat with Mick. And Jess, always happy to see a new friendly face out here. Hope the road's been treating you well. Uh, who are you? Jess Brown, barter crew. I scoured the outback for hidden gems to bring back to the people of Brookton. And what do you do? I drive a camel cart between Brookton and Kokobi as part of a permanent trade route. Occasionally, I chance it and sleep out under the stars. Only when I know I won't get caught. You come here often? Well, I live here, so yeah. He gives you a crooked smile. What do you do with your camels when you're not traveling? Bob and Don hang out at Taylor's farm with the other camels and sheep. I think they like the company. Now what's there to do around here? Drink and shoot the crap. She gives you a faint smile. Most people don't stay long. They come to the big smoke for one reason or another, and they go on with their lives. Those who do stay tend to have families, though. She falls quiet. I need anything? Nothing at the mo, but thanks for asking. Gives you the briefest of smiles. Have a good one. Right back at you. Oh, the trailer that Mick's crew use on their barter runs to Kokobi. Hopefully no one's told Mick that my new nickname is Noodles. Uh, John's let you off for the night, has he? He sizes you up. I want to hear more about this showdown with Otterside, but I do my best thinking after a beer or two. Hub's right there. Unless you've got a few more chores you need to wrap up first. Uh, nah. Let's go grab a beer. You get no argument from me. Excuse me. I just need a moment of your time. The speaker is a tall, broad-shouldered man, well-groomed, with a gold necklace and gold bracelet glinting in the sun. Despite his size, he moves with a fluid grace. He reminds you of nothing so much as a big cat. Attractive, smiling, and dangerous as hell. Remain silent. Spit it out, then. All the humor is gone from him, like he senses a threat. He's alert and focused, his eyes never leave leaving the newcomer. His voice is low and calm. My name is James Wakefield. I'm glad to have met you, Mr. Jones, as I come bearing a proposition for you and your people. Proposition, he repeats flatly and dismissively. I better make it quick, mate. He holds his hands out, palms up. Let me be plain, then. I come from a powerful community to the east. We're rebuilding civilization. I'd like to invite Brookton to be part of that effort. Uh, join us. Begin and the age of grubbing through the relics of the past. Join us, and we can usher in an age of miracles. His eyes narrow. You want us to bow and scrape to someone who's never even looked our way before. Never had the good grace to come and say hello himself. He spits to the side. Civilization. Mm-hmm. And what do we get out of it, pray tell? Civilization will bring the rains. Fill these fields with wheat again. What happens if we say no? Remain silent. He stares at the stranger silently for a few seconds. We've got nothing but your word to go by, mate. Show us some of these miracles. Be so keen to bring us into the fold. He chuckles. Mr. Jones, I was sent merely to make the offer. I'm a messenger, not a diplomat. If it's pretty words you're after, you're not the man I thought you were. Well, Mr. Not a Diplomat, why don't you go... Off back home, and tell your overlords that if they want us kissing their boots, they're going to have to prove those boots are worth the tongue. No, they can. Answer's a hard no. He takes the answer with equanimity. I must ask one more time. We can offer your people many things. Food, water, protection. Freedom from want or care. The future and its limitless possibilities, rather than scratching out a living on the edge of darkness.
And what's the cost of that protection? Absolute obedience? You're not the first to try that one on me. We wouldn't be the first to succeed either. Who are you? Where do you come from? He spreads his hands. I'm simply the bearer of good news, from lands to the east. Nothing more, nothing less. His voice has descended to a low growl. Mate, you're about to get boot polished where the sun don't shine, if you don't take a hint and rack off. No need to be rude, his tone is mild. You've made your choice clear. My duty was to ask, and so I have done. Be assured that I shall sleep soundly tonight. A good evening to you all. He stares after Wakefield, thoughtful. Tomorrow we can send someone to follow his tracks, to find out where he came from. We'll get to the bottom of this. Oh, I'm gonna need a beer or five after that ordeal. I think I prefer there be no voice acting, since it's like one sentence every now and then. I'll see you in the pub. This ranger woman's face is careworn. Her skin is toughened by the harsh Australian sun. Her clothes are perfect for stalking the bush. Her gun's grip is polished by years of use. She spares you a quick, assessing glance. It carries on with her conversation. Hey Ella, Mishdi. This is Crocodile Don D. You can just call me Don D. I I just started out on the farm today. A Don D, Ella and Mishdi are with the scouts in Bali Bali Hall. Good day. <sighs> Been a hell of a day, yeah? Gotta head back and spell Matt. She'll have gotten pissy sitting up in that nest by a lonesome for hours. He stretches and yawns. The younger woman is dressed similarly. Her clothes are newer and cleaner, and her weapon isn't nearly as worn. She has a pleasant smile and friendly eyes, but there's an underlying frustration to her movements. She nods, slapping dust off her trousers. She seems unable to give her companion her full attention. Oh, er, uh, I was actually planning to head to the pub. Like you said, it's been a hell of a day. Pub o'clock, yeah? <laughs> I'm parched. Hope we'll see you in there. Don't be a bloody idiot. If you're having a night at the arms, we're taking the truck. You can walk back home. Ripper, see you in the morning, L. Nods to all of you as he and Jonesy head for the pub door. Yeah, what's a drink or two? I like there's many cars on the roads these days. Ever seen what a car does to a roux? Or what a roux does to a car? Only jerks drink and drive. That's true. I agree wholeheartedly. She turns her gaze back to the younger woman. Right, Misty, let's pack it in. We got a free ride home, and like I said, Matt will be upset about being left out of all the action. To be fair, I thought today would be less... Eventful. But yeah, time to go. She sighs unhappily, and still creeps into her eyes. Look, Ella. Here are some facts you may have conveniently forgotten. She holds up three fingers on her right hand. One, this may surprise you, but you're not my mum. She takes off her ring finger and touches her index finger. Two, I'm an adult and capable of making my own decisions. Tonight, I choose to hit the pub. She folds down her index finger and glances at the remaining middle finger. And hey, it's point three. Listen, my mind's made up. I'm having a few drinks, not planning to get wasted. Cut me some slack. And mate, we saved that boy at uh, Key or Kai Road today. Can you understand that? We saved an innocent life. That's worth a beer in my book. She shoots you a quick look. Besides, we did a lot of work for the community today. Let them celebrate with us a little. We're all in this together, after all. Ella looks like she's about to talk, but Misty holds up her hand and keeps going. Plus, we know Taylor's farm is raided today. What if they come back? What if they want revenge? Burkton don't need guns. They're happy to have a pint and then stand guard. 
Remaining silent is a resolve test. Our Brookton's got him handled, Misty. They don't need our guns here. Come on. Why are you so dead set on staying? She lifts her chin defiantly. Josie promised to buy me a beer. You know how I feel about free beer. You're pulling my leg. Jonesy. She steps back in size. Kid, I've got stories about Jonesy that'll curl your pubes, assuming you've got any. I don't think I need to interject here. Anyway, Dreamer, I'm gone. I'd say don't do anything I wouldn't, but you're already way past that point if you're keen on a dickhead like Henry. I'll tell Matt you're drinking her beer. Is Henry Jonesy? As she turns away, then turns back. She blows out a heavy sigh. Rough. This weren't trying to be my dad. She takes a deep breath and lets it out through pursed lips. All right, up o'clock it is. She spares you a glance. You coming? I feel a little guilty taking the uh, the drinking and driving option. I was trying to be funny, but it's not how it was taken. Because to be clear, I do not condone drinking and driving. Alright, to the pub. I'm kind of in the middle of something, mate. Why, Nosy, back off. This place is pretty good, as far as local watering holes go. Oh, great. <laughs> oh. <laughs> her attention is focused on her boyfriend. You couldn't interrupt her, or interrupt if you tried. Oh, having a good one, mate? Alright, let's catch up with these folks. She's talking animatedly, almost knocking over her glass of beer. Jonesy moves it out of harm's way. I'm not looking to make new friends, see ya. He's listening to Misty's enthusiastic recount of the day's events with half an ear, and keeping tabs on the people in the bar with the other. Up for a chat. Ah, yeah. You ready to sit down and share a few pints, and have a yarn about how today went? He looks at Jonesy, who's drinking his beer and simply raises his eyebrows by way of assent. Yeah, let's do it. Atta boy. Jonesy picks up his beer and wanders off, sorry, wanders off to find conversation elsewhere. Misty follows. Suddenly, you fixed by Mick's piercing gaze. Let's get down to brass tacks. We had a bit of a yarn after you came back from Avon River. But I've got more to say about your conduct, if you have the mind to hear it. Only if I get to reciprocate. He shrugs. Turnabout's fair play. I'll do you, and you can do me. He crosses his arms and gives you a long, unblinking assessment. I don't know what happened out at Avon River, but you can be darn sure I'm going to find out. Hope you're ready to stand up and face the consequences, whatever they may be. He takes a breath before continuing. Look, mate, whatever this little hiccup. Hiccup? Hiccup. A hiccup was. It won't be the end of your career in Brookton. Not just yet. But I'll expect great things of you in the months to come. If you want to be able to bank on that reputation of yours. Now, your turn. Again. He fixes you with an intense stare. You're pretty rude to that Wakefield guy from before, but I hope he doesn't make you regret it. I very much doubt he can. The sound of hail reaches your ears a moment before Sean bursts into the pub, screams and cloying smoke trailing in his wake. Get out here! We're under attack! 
The growl of his voice carries in the shocked silence. Bloody mongrels. Let's show him what it means to tangle with Brookton. She grabs her rifle from the wall and cocks it. Let's rock. Alright, I'm going to call it here and next time we will retaliate against who's attacking Brookton. I wonder if it's Pink Alley, Otterside, or the Poachers. Or the guy, the uh, town that Wakefield was talking about. We have four potential assailants. But for now, I'm going to call it here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.